What's going on guys? Today I want to show you how to find some winning products. So we're going to get on my screen, uh, get on my laptop here. I'm going to do product research uh, just to, off the top of the head here. No script. Uh, that way you know exactly what I look for in products. Uh, that way you can mimic the same things and kind of learn from my experiences of selling on Amazon uh, for the last three years. We all know that one failed product can ruin an Amazon FBA business. So I'm hoping to show you, you know, all the common mistakes out there, the big red flags, uh, on products out there and exactly what I look for in a winning product. So of course guys, give me about five minutes to get into a deep groove here. Uh, really get deep into the product research, really uh, kind of just start, you know, just mind firing everything I'm thinking about while looking at these products. You know, this is probably the best way to learn product research is watching it by someone who has started 30 plus products uh, on Amazon, all private label and watch him go exactly through what to look for in a product, you know, all unscripted from the top of his head and really dig deep into, you know, what, you know, successful sellers on Amazon are doing. Just one last quick thing here, guys, before we get started. Of course, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below and that little notifications bell. Uh, that way, you know, you get everything I learned from Amazon FBA and that way you're not falling behind uh, the rest of the competition when it comes to knowledge. All right, guys, other than that, let's get going. So hopping in my screen here, uh, the first thing you guys are gonna see is that I'm on Helium 10. So this is a product research software that I use uh, to find products on Amazon. Obviously there's product research softwares like Viral Launch, Helium 10, Jungle Scout. Uh, to be honest, I like all three of those. So if you have one of these, uh, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. You can do exactly what I'm doing here uh, on Helium 10. I'm just using Helium 10 for this example. But if you do want Helium 10, if you, uh, you know, want to get Helium 10 and follow along exactly, I do have a coupon code down below in the description for your first month. It's 50% off. Uh, so it's a great way to just to try the software. If you don't like it, of course, don't renew. Uh, or anything like that. Uh, so that's down below, guys, if you need that. if you, Again, if you're paying for other software that you like, just, just use that. Uh, you know, we're gonna use the black box tool here today, uh, this one right here. And you know, Viral Launch, I believe it's called Product Discovery. Uh, then Jungle Scout, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's probably gonna be the first tool listed out because product research is the first thing, you know, you do on any software. Uh, so you can follow along exactly uh, right there. They're very similar uh, and everything like that. But again, in the description below, if you need that. So like I said, we're gonna use black box here. Uh, you can see all these different tools here. We, you know, there's a use for every single tool on here, but to keep it simple and, and to get really ideas churning, this is what I like to do. So I like to go to black box here and then we can see that uh, there's different tabs up here. So uh, maybe you're familiar with this, maybe you're not. So this, we can look through products and like specific criteria when it comes to monthly revenue, price, review count, review rating, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, keywords, this one's a little bit newer. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this before. Uh, or have used it in the past or seen someone else do it, but uh, hopefully the way I show it to you is gonna be a little different, a little more easier to comprehend. Uh, this is the tool we're gonna be using today to, to really dig down. And why I like to use keyword uh, when it comes to product research is because I like to go into different you know niches, long tail keywords that maybe other people aren't looking for, right? I like to go down rabbit holes and find products creatively. And when you're looking for products, it's very straightforward, right? You find one product, it's got 100 different keywords that people can call to get to it. But when it comes to keywords, you find this long tail keyword and maybe you go into Amazon and there's no product that you know, fits that keyword exactly, but people are searching it you know, monthly, right? So maybe there's a thousand or 5,000 searches a month, but there's no really product that fits that, you know, that keyword perfectly that customers are looking for. So maybe we'll find you know, some demand for a product, but there's no supply. So we fill that and it's just basic economics of, of how we do Amazon. That's just kind of one way you can look at this when it comes to keyword research. Uh, and, and doing product research with keywords. But it's the most simple and it's probably the best way you could look at anything in this, but it's just another way I can find, you know, niches and rabbit holes that no one else is finding because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to find a product that, you know, 50 other eyeballs have been on. And, you know, I start this product, I launch it three months later, and then I have, you know, competition, about 50 new sellers that enter the market with me. I, I don't want that. And that's why I show it this way. And I'll keep showing you what I mean by that as we do product research as this video goes along. Again, just give me, give me you know, three to five minutes here of your time uh, to make sure that I get in the thick of things. Uh, I promise I won't disappoint you guys. I've been doing this for a while now. So the first thing we need to look at is search volume. So how many times a month is a customer looking up these keywords? Uh, so this is a great way to kind of figure out, you know, what, what's the volume? What kind of, you know, competitive level are you looking for when it comes to a product? Uh, for this, for me, uh, you know, 2,000, uh, to 8,000 is really kind of a sweet spot. 2,000 again being on the lower side, uh, you know, maybe maybe you can get five to 10 sales a day with that keyword, uh, but that's, that's kind of pushing it. Uh, safer side, you know, 5,000 to 8,000, uh, you're gonna be getting five to 10 sales easily with those keywords. Again, there's no perfect science to this, but 
Uh, I just like to have a little broad range of 2,000 to 8,000. A monthly revenue, uh, you can put this in, you can leave this out. Again, search volume is kind of what we're looking for here. Uh, but just to be on the safe side and make sure we're not you know, picking products that are kind of a waste of time. So monthly revenue, let's do 3,000 to let's say 15,000, okay? Uh, so for me personally, I'm okay with starting a product that only does 3,000 to 5,000 a month. I, I personally am just because the competition is gonna be so low, it's gonna be easy to dominate that uh, and you get the reviews needed to just be number one in that niche. Again, you know, I know a lot of people out there wanna start a $15,000 a month product, um, which, which is totally fine. The opportunity is there, just note the competition is gonna be a little higher. Uh, and it's gonna be a little harder to get into because there's gonna be more eyeballs uh, in this field. So this is a good range just to kind of hit everybody's field. Again, these are just criteria that are, that are mine, that are uh, something that just gives me a jump start to go down rabbit holes. So feel free to, to mess around with these criteria and everything like that. Uh, for the price, I'm sure you've heard this before, you know, 13 to, uh, uh, let's say $50 here. So 40 to 50 is kind of my max when it comes to, you know, first starting products. Uh, after $50 and above, it becomes a different kind of field. Uh, you need to know how to work that, and uh, the inventory orders get really expensive really fast. Uh, review count here, so we can leave minimum blank. Let's go to you know 250 here. So uh, you know a lot of people say 100. You probably heard me say that before. 200, 250, but you know we you, got to be flexible here. That we have different options, and I'm not really scared of someone who has 250 reviews. That if that's the max competitor in my field, I'm not too worried. I know I'm going to keep learning in this field and keep pushing hard. That I'm going to eventually catch him. What I don't want is going against competition with 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 reviews. That's really hard to catch. Uh, it takes a lot of money to do that. Uh, review rating, I'm gonna leave blank here, but this is something if you're looking for a low quality product uh, to compete against, this is where you're gonna put like max you know, 3.7. So in that field, you know, the competitor will have a max of 3.7 stars. And obviously if you have a 4.5 star rating, uh, you're gonna overtake him pretty easily. But I'm gonna leave this blank just because uh, I wanna be flexible here. A word count, so again, we're looking for keyword phrases when it comes to this kind of product research. So word count is just, you know, how many words in this phrase are you gonna max allow or minimum allow? So we want at least two here, and we're gonna do a max of, let's say five, just because, you know, when it gets to six, seven, eight, it gets really funky, like extra large, uh, gigantic, you know, t-shirt for men, big like you know that's when it's like who's really actually searching that do i really want to put that in my title like that's just kind of weird again play around this you know five six seven are all good uh, as well two is on the like you're going to have like a lot more popular keywords that are more broad uh, but you know three four five is where hopefully we find those winners uh, and get some good product ideas there advanced filters again mess with this if you'd like uh, categories is an easy one to do uh, you know maybe just arts crafts uh, baby, if you like that, beauty, personal care, uh, that one's fringe for me. I don't like clothing, cell phone accessories, obviously collectible coins, computers, accessories, electronics, no, handmade products, no, uh, health and households, okay, home and kitchens, great, industrial scientific, I like that one, kitchen and dining, great, uh, musical instruments, uh, maybe if you're interested in that field, uh, office products, usually a two commodity like for me, but uh, we can check it out, patio, lawn and garden, like this one. Pet supplies, a little tougher, but still a good one. Sports and outdoors, again, a little tougher. A lot of clothing in that one, uh, but we can check that one as well. Uh, tools and home improvement, I like. Toys and games, me personally, not a huge fan just because toys are so trendy. Uh, and video games, obviously, no as well there. Next one, guys, is you know keyword search here. Uh, you can put in phrases that you want to match up. Uh, exclude keywords. Uh, you can exclude certain ones. Say there's a lot of brand names popping up in your search. So I usually only mess with this when I'm not getting the results I want down below. Uh, shipping size tier. This is a good one too. So if you know you don't want special oversized, large oversized, uh, anything like that. So I'm going to do small, large, and small oversized here. I'm going to leave medium and large out. Special, of course. I don't want to sell washing machines on Amazon. That doesn't sound fun at all. Uh, number of sellers, uh, this one's more for you know wholesale, things like that, don't worry about that. You can mess around with uh, units here per month, best sellers rank. Uh, again, just don't get stuck in the weeds, guys. This doesn't really matter that much. Uh, or just mess with categories and shipping sized here if you'd like. Uh, and then let's hit search down below. All right, guys, so after we hit search here, we can see that we've populated 200 plus products found here. Uh, and we can just scroll through along here, tons of pages. Uh, so we have our uh, you know, our start here. So, you know, the first one I see is Andre Jardin. So this is probably a brand name. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, Gurgling Cod Pitcher. So this is my type of product right here because it sounds bizarre. 
It's weird, I've never heard of it. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do here, just cause you know, I know the criteria is gonna match what I'm looking for, but you can take a look here. It's about 4,700 uh, in sales per month, 144 reviews, four and a half stars, um, you know, a $43 price point, which is fine by me. So the next thing I'm gonna do guys is when I find good ideas or you know, things I wanna go check out, I'm just gonna go quickly, you know, hit view on Amazon. Uh, it's gonna open a new tab right up here. I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna do, you know, four or five of these, uh, whatever it may be, depending on my product research. Uh, and then I'm gonna go check them out all individually. You know, we might click into one and be like, oh, that's stupid, I can't believe I clicked on that one. Uh, then you're back to this and it's just kinda, you know, it, it hurts your momentum with this. So I like to pick four or five, even up to 10, uh, then really start looking at those. That way, you know, I at least get two to three good ideas uh, from that that I can expand on later besides just getting a, a goose egg and a goose egg. And it's it's really, you know, it just kind of kills all momentum and it just, you know, kills motivation for this this project, which is just, you know, it's very hard to do this just because it's very tedious. We, we all know this. Uh, but uh, next guy's lawyer mug, uh, view on Amazon, uh, bonsai tree light, okay. Uh, that's interesting. Obviously, we don't want anything that's you know would take a licensing or agreement uh, with that brand name to sell, so we're not gonna do that. Ukrainian Christmas ornaments. Okay, so obviously this would be very seasonal, it's for Christmas. Uh, so we're gonna leave that one off. Uh, hairdresser ornament, uh, magic practice copybook English. Uh, that's interesting, let's take a look at that one. Uh, it only has 14 reviews. Vintage ornament sets. So we're gonna get a lot of ornament sets just because it's near Christmas. Uh, you get this every season of the year. You're gonna see a lot of summer products in the summer, obviously. Uh, you know, Mother's Day gifts around that time. You just kind of kind of ignore them unless you're looking for seasonal gifts, uh, which I am not. Uh, cow calendar. Calendars can be huge because we're turning over a new year. Uh, again, they seasonal because they just sell in January and February, essentially, maybe December. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, grandparents mugs. Uh, so these are gifts that I'm probably seeing here, but uh, I mean, we can take a look at their uh, BSR throughout time uh, to see if they're seasonal or not. So if you're not sure, I'll show you exactly how to tell if they're seasonal or not uh, here in a second. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six here. See how fast that was, guys? Uh, we're just getting ideas. Uh, the weirder they are, the better. Uh, just because, you know, people don't like to sell weird stuff. They like to sell stuff they're proud of. But, you know, if you're making money, that's what you should be really proud of, right? Uh, so let's go to the first one here. Uh, so gurgling cod pitcher. Oh no. <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. Okay, so if I could sell something like this, I'd be very, very proud of myself. Uh, so let's first thing, let's look at the Helium 10 Chrome extension app. So this is called X-Ray. Uh, this is free with Helium 10. You just download it real quick uh, with Google Chrome. Uh, you can get on the Helium 10 site or go to the Google Chrome store and grab this. Uh, so I'm gonna hit X-Ray here and it's gonna bring up uh, all the data, right? And obviously it just takes a little bit to load here, guys. Uh, but we see, you know, just in order here, uh, what's going on. So the first thing I like right here is Googling Cod Pitcher search volume 7580. So that's the top of our, our, our results. You know, I said about 8,000 as the max there. Then we can see what's going on here. So 7,000 in revenue, 21,000 in revenue, uh, 1,500, 8,000, 2,000, 47,000. So it's kind of spread out. So we can see the revenue is very good. I, I, I like the revenue. I like the search volume. Um, <laughs> it's a weird product, which, you know, I like to thrive on. So we can see here, the photo is the price point, $57, that's that's incredible. Uh, so we see that $57 right there. We can you know quickly just look at the pictures here, kind of match up. So the blue one's doing about 21,000. The extra large blue one's doing about 1,500. So again, this is one of those things, guys, if you're going to sell something like this, don't reinvent the wheel at first, especially if it's your first product. Uh, you know, mimic, obviously don't copy exactly, but mimic what the successful ones are doing. So if we can see right here, that the extra large blue one is only doing 1500, where uh, this you know cobalt blue large, so it's a little smaller, is doing 21,000. Which one are you gonna wanna start or be similar to, right? You're gonna to want to be similar to this one right here. Uh, very obvious there, but obviously people just get so, they wanna be creative, they wanna be different. That, that's fantastic, but get some cash flow in first, uh, then expand your line from there. That's when the fun starts, because you can start messing with ideas, start two to three new ideas, obviously, not every new idea is gonna work, but you're gonna hit that one idea after starting three, and it's gonna take off, and you're gonna be the only one doing it, uh, and it's gonna be a blast, you're gonna feel really accomplished and proud, but when it doesn't make sense cash flow-wise, it doesn't you know, prove that it's gonna make money for you, it doesn't make sense at first. So hopefully you understand what I'm saying there, uh, and that's getting through to you, uh, but we can keep looking uh, here. So white ones, so these are a bunch of mugs here. Obviously there's just a, 
uh, generic picture here. So let's click it into this blue one here. Okay, so you can see here that we got a guggle <laughs> jug, uh, cobalt blue, large, eight and a half inch. Um, we got different colors here. So this listing obviously um, is selling all different types of colors here. Uh, photos, uh, they're okay. Uh, obviously he's got a lot of products here. So he's mixing the white ones with different colored ones. And uh, when really he's selling the blue on this listing, uh, so you'd have the advantage there to really niche down and, and get some really good lifestyles uh, for these ones right there. Uh, bullets, oh, that's really cool. Uh, so it, it creates a gurgling sound when poured from three quarters full. Uh, I might have to get one of these. This is <laughs> super cool. Uh, made from British finest raw ceramics, made in England, smooth and easy to grip. Uh, sought after art collector by Wade Ceramics. So we see here the bolts are okay. They're telling more about the brand and and a little bit more about the product in general, which is cool, I like that, but not really selling any benefits besides the unique gurgling sound. Uh, smooth, easy to grip, multifunction gurgler jug that can be wine, vase, utensil jar, ornament. You could definitely improve these bullets for sure. Uh, this is what I was talking about before. So this is BSR, guys. So if you're not familiar with BSR, it stands for Best Sellers Rank. Uh, so every category ranks their product on Amazon. Uh, so if you're number one in a category, that means you're selling the most out of anybody in that category. So the lower this score is, uh, the more volume they're doing. And we can see here over the last 30 days, they're kind of all over the place. So if we hit all time up here, uh, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to seasonality. I can see, right? So if this BSR raises during certain months, I know that it's not doing as well in that season in most cases. So something like this huge spike right here, this usually means they're out of stock because uh, you don't see this huge jump uh, unless you see it consistently, but you see this huge jump right here, then it goes back down for a little bit. A uh, huge jump right here, then it goes back down. That just means they got out of stock there uh, for a bit. And we can see that in July, uh, not, not doing as well. Uh, October, then in Christmas time, it really took off. But uh, the years before, it looks like they're more consistent. Uh, they were doing well. They're doing pretty well throughout the whole course of this thing. Uh, they really took off, obviously, in Christmas time but it looks like it still does sell throughout the year, which is, you know, you want some consistency with your product uh, just because it really helps out with cash flow uh, and holding up inventory, all that good stuff right there. Uh, product description sucks. Uh, you can definitely improve this with some HTML or do brand registry as well. Uh, so I like to see that. Uh, we can learn a lot, guys, by the questions and answers. So if, if I find a product um, that I really like, I'm gonna read through these, how I can improve it, look through these photos. Uh, everything like that. So say I really like this this product, which I do. I wanna do more research on it. I wanna track it for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, this link right here. I'm gonna have an Excel sheet where I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting down ideas, right? So I'm gonna put the link right here so I can get quick, easy access. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna grab this Gurling kind of picture here. Uh, so if I go up to the top here, I can just copy that. So we know the keyword right here and obviously be a little more organized than I am you know, being right here. So if we just, insert one above, we can do product link, product keyword, and we can write notes uh, along here. So if we wanna do you know, sales volume, it was doing one to uh, 21K uh, right here, or you can just put the sales volume for this product right here. Uh, you know, um, let's say keyword volume. So it was about 7,800 if I remember correctly, uh, give or take. Obviously I'd be more precise about it. Uh, I wasn't on a time limit here and trying to get to, to more products to show you, but I always like to keep a list of all the products I'm looking for. That way I, I can, you know, if say I get 10 products right here, guys, that I like, well, now I have options, right? I can start tracking these, go deeper into them. And then instead of like coming up, you know, with, with zero ideas or something doesn't work out after two weeks of looking it up, you're stuck from ground zero again. But at least here you have backup plans on top of backup plans and you really learn a lot quicker going through this. Uh, that way. So that's the gurgling cod picture here, guys. Again, you might be afraid it's breakable, but good, that's gonna keep other competition out. It's really easy to do specialized packing. Uh, you just gotta outwork the other people, okay? Uh, so the next one here, uh, if we go in, is lawyer mug, okay? Uh, so we just probably got mugs with something uh, written about lawyers, trust me. I'm almost a lawyer, so this would be a good present for people in law school or about to take the bar. Uh, please do not confuse your Google search with my law degree. Uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, trust me, I'm a lawyer. Women belong all places where decisions are being made. Um, I think that was the judge that just passed away recently. Uh, you are a great lawyer, really terrific, so very smart. Uh, really fantastic. Other lawyers, totally disastrous, <laughs> believe me. Okay, uh, so that's, that one's a stretch. Uh, we can see here, see you later, litigator, nice. Okay, uh, so let's look at the sales, right? So we can see what designs are selling well uh, and to see 
um, you know, if there's anything we can kind of uh, use to, you know, start some products of our own. Obviously, this might be a Christmas present that, you know, stocking stuff or just a quick gift uh, from relatives who are, you know, lawyers. But if it's selling well, I don't care. I'm always down for that. Uh, so we see 5,000 here, 17,000. Let's look at this one. Uh, so that's the Google one. Uh, that's pretty cool, 17,000. We got 9,000 here. Uh, so that'd be, that's this one right here. It'd be super easy to, uh, you know, put a quote of hers on here to sell the same thing. Uh, 4,000. So we have different ones doing different amount of sales right here. Again, you know, if it's a mug, if you get a good manufacturer, it'd be easy to start two to three of these at the same time. Uh, try out some different designs. Again, don't copy here, but try to mimic what other people are doing or, or if you have similar designs, right? So please do not confuse your Google search with my law degree. I, you can play off this uh, in, in many different ways. I'd be a little scared to put that Google logo uh, on my cup uh, just because you don't have permission. But you can definitely think of something that's, you know, plays off that. Uh, let's see, this one's 9,000. Uh, again, the same one. It'd be really easy to have a famous quote of hers and, and put another photo there. It'd be different. Uh, it'd, it'd pay the same respect. Uh, it'd be super cool. And then when you have, you know, two or three mugs doing super well, uh, you could go ahead and start your own, right? And be creative or hire a designer or get your ideas from, you know, Pinterest or Instagram uh, or something of that sorts. Uh, the first thing I want to look at here, guys, you know, the, for the next step would be uh, BSR over time. So is this just for the holiday? Um, you know, for mugs, people usually don't go all out with the listings, just one photo here. That might be all you need really uh, for that. So we hit all time. Let's take a look here. So they've been selling for a while, since about uh, April 2018 here. I can see it goes up and down. Uh, did really well last Christmas here. Uh, sells up and down. So this is definitely a Christmas product uh, for sure. But if again, it's something you want to do seasonally uh, and just have a bunch of mugs for Christmas, something to look into, okay? This is not a, it's not a bad route. It's always actually something I've always wanted to do is really focus on one season uh, and really just dominate that and kind of figure that out uh, myself. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one, guys, because it's just it's super seasonal, it looks like. Uh, so let's go to the next one, Bonsai Tree Light. This one might be seasonal too for Christmas, uh, just because of the fact of people like to decorate during the holidays. Uh, we see 17 reviews, 28 reviews, 776. This one's just kind of a, um, no, they're all about the same, okay. Uh, so one right here. So this is a fairly newer product that's kind of blowing up now, I'd guess. Uh, so let's look at sales real fast. So if we ignore these sponsored ones right here, right? So these four are sponsored, obviously, guys, that are just Amazon PPC. People are advertising. Uh, I like the organic ones just because those are the ones that are selling the most for that keyword, uh, just based on what we know from Amazon's algorithm. Uh, so Bonsai Tree Light here doing about 11,000, uh, 6,000, 27,000, 125,000. Jeez. Okay, so this one with uh, 312 reviews doing fantastic. Uh, this one with 32,000. Uh, 730 reviews okay but the good news is you know there's some stiff competition in here but this guy uh with only 17 reviews is doing about 11,000 12,000 i'd be i'd be happy with that uh, so let's click into this guy actually he's gonna be very new so i want more data so i want to go down to uh this 312 guy open up a new tab let's go to the 730 guy too so i want to see this over time and obviously these guys are the best uh you know top sellers so this is where you're going to get your inspiration from uh, and everything like that. So if we go to all time, they didn't start till August of 2020, uh, and they've just been on fire ever since. Okay, so out of stock. So this probably, I wouldn't even say this is seasonal from what I'm seeing here. Obviously, it's going to sell a lot better in December, but everything does. But having a sales rank that steady during October, uh, even in September, because they're just trying to figure things out, right? So we can see they're in and out of stock, getting their first sales, getting their first sales. Um, and then really pushing, pushing out of stock, pushing, pushing, and they just keep going down. So uh, it's pretty fast to get that many reviews as well. So uh, maybe a lot of sales or hopefully not black hat stuff. Um, but let's take a look at the second one here at 730. Uh, so if we go down to this guy, let's go hit all time. Uh, this one's been around since July 2019. Some more data here. Um, let's see here. This is 1202. So this is December. So it hit a Hit a downturn there, or not downturn, but hit a sales spike here uh, during last Christmas. Then a little up and down throughout the year. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, a little up and down until about November hit, went out of stock here. Uh, and then, let's see, July, then they kind of got steadied out, selling a ton here. So again, yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing right here during this, but obviously the peak is during the holiday season. Uh, but it does look like they're doing 
consistent sales here. So maybe not you know anything to write home about, but there are some sales churning right here uh, during the off months, but then they really just, they go ham during um, the December season there. So it's something to, it'd be interesting. Uh, it's something I wanna do more research on and, and kind of figure out, you know, is it really just for the holidays or something people have all year round? So we have bonsai tree light. Um, let's put that in there. Very interesting. And something you can play on this a lot. You can make different sizes, different colors of lights. Uh, so we have options here um, and everything like that. So Magic Practice Copybook English. Okay, so uh, this might be a little tougher to get into, but if they're very simple books, uh, again, 11 uh, reviews at 3.7. So if you can find a manufacturer and easily put together a book uh, better than theirs, uh, you know, you can easily buy these for 17 bucks, look through them and be like, okay, these are trash. Uh, let's make something better. Again, not trying to call their product trash, but that's how I would approach it, right? You're hoping that you can make subtle improvements and, and help people out with the goal, which is to learn English, right? Or to get better handwriting here. So let's click in this. Let's figure out what this is, you know, more about here. So this is more about practicing uh, drawing and uh, calligraphy. I can't say it. Don't make fun of me in the comments, please. Uh, but yeah, this is more about handwriting, uh, doing some fun math here. That's cool. So a lot of learning activities. Uh, you know, if I, you know, I'm not a parent yet, but I'm, I'm guessing when I do, I'm going to do a lot of this stuff for my kid, especially at a young age, just because I'm, I'm going to push them to, to learn and, and, and do new things and not just play with toys, which is totally fine, but more to, you know, um, if you can learn and have fun at the same time, that's, that's going to be bread and butter right there. Uh, bullets are pretty big here. Uh, brand name is something random. So I'm guessing just a private label seller here. Uh, let's hit all times, probably something new. In November here, uh, sales ranks pretty pretty down there. Uh, this is something to read the bad reviews about. Um, let's see questions. This could be a lot better. This product description. Uh, disappointing. I was very disappointed in the size of the books. They should be the size of regular notebooks. Small children need large letters when learning to write. Okay, so that's what an easy fix right there. Just bigger books. Okay, uh, it's a good product. It's a good product. Um, tons of bad reviews. Uh, mostly ratings here. So. Uh, not a lot to go off of here, uh, but know that people are genuinely not enjoying this book. It could be way better. Uh, let's go back here. So we have 65 reviews here, 3.9 stars. Uh, that's not very good at all. Uh, again, just kind of a weird brain name here. Uh, if we go down to reviews, not for teaching toddlers how to start writing. I got it from my toddler, but it's very small, really not for learning ABCs, okay? Too small for little hands, uh, smaller than expected. Easy fix, waste of money, the workbooks are tiny. The letters and numbers they're supposed to trace are so small, do not buy this. There has to be better products out there. That product could be yours, right? Uh, so let's quickly go back. We haven't looked at sales yet, guys. I know I got a little ahead of myself here, but again, we looked up the criteria of what we're looking for. So I'm hoping uh, most of these will be in the range anyways, based on what we put into the keyword research tool. Uh, so we see 1,000, 9,000, 8,000 here, 5,000, 7,000. Cool, this would be really fun to really learn into like helping kids learn, uh, really digging in, you know, doing the product research, meaning I should say market research for this, like buying all the books that are getting bad reviews, looking at them like, oh, this is not good. Maybe, uh, you know, getting your niece or nephew or uh, maybe if you have small children, um, you can have them test these books out and be like, okay, this is where the faults are here. This is what we can improve just based on real life experience. That's that's how you get the best product. And that's how you do real market research is you, pretty much become the consumer. Uh, so this would be really easy to fix up. Again, you're doing two plus two in a book. Uh, so the writing part of it, I don't think would be an issue, right? Don't be afraid of that. Uh, just know that people are gonna be scared of that and it'd be really easy for you to hop in and kind of take advantage of that. So I really like this one. Um, let's go to product ideas. There's the keyword. I'm just gonna grab this whole link right here uh, for the market to go back to later. Again, I'd fill in this data a little bit more. Maybe talk about reviews, ratings, notes, right? So I put in notes here. I'd be like, people think they are way too small. Uh, they have terrible reviews. Could easily fix, fix them myself. Boom, right there, okay? And it'd be really easy to expand this line, right? So you have you know, your books that are doing well, just we know just based on the research we just did. And then you can easily do holiday editions. You could do, uh, different age groups. You could do one for a girl, one for a boy. Possibly these are endless, guys. You can see that I'm talking really fast about this stuff, so obviously I'm a nerd about this stuff, so 
Uh, I'm sorry about that if you think I'm geeking out for no reason, uh, but this is pretty, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so next we got grandparent mugs. Again, this is kind of like the lawyer thing. That's gonna be a great gift idea. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not even gonna look into it because I know that it's just for like birthdays and for Christmas based on what I saw with the lawyer mugs. Again, if you wanna get into mugs, that's fine. This is just another avenue you get into. I'm pretty stoked on the three ideas I just got within you know, 20 minutes of this video or whatever it may be. Uh, and I got to only, I scrolled down the first page of this research, uh, whatever I typed in here. Uh, and I still have you know, plenty of ideas to go down and then tens and tens of more pages. So what I would do is I continue to do this. I'd get five to 10 ideas here, do deeper research on this, uh, you know, figure out what the margins may be with Alibaba or you know, suppliers out there, uh, you know, kind of calculate the rough estimate uh, for those and you know, start collecting data, guys. Get into the nitty gritty to figure out what would really work for you, what would excite you, right? That book thing excited me just because I know when I have children, I'm gonna want them to learn uh, and have fun at the same time and be super cool to have, you know, to really dig deep into that. But it might be bonsai tree lights for you or something uh, deeper as well. So I'm not saying you have to like follow your passions or your desires. Again, if you just want cash flow, that's perfect too. You gotta follow the numbers and it's gonna make sense. But you know, the cool thing is when you start to get that cash flow, then you can start doing cool things that kind of excite you. Uh, and that's when you get a business that you no longer are you know, working in, but you're just kind of having fun. Uh, and every day it's, you're not going to your job. I know cliches, cliches, Cameron, you're, you're a broken record. Anyways, guys, off point there. Uh, but that's it, guys. I hope that was super helpful. Again, if it was, push that like button, guys. Just, just tap it for me. Get this video out to more people. Uh, comment down below if you liked it. Get any questions at all. If you like more videos about product research, let me know in the, in the comments down below. I'll do more about product research for you. Then, of course, guys, hit that subscribe button. I got tons of other product research videos on my channel as well. I'll put them up on the screen here somewhere or down in the description. That way you can click that. I'll watch them. Again, these are all my ideas. It's churning, right? There's no script there. It was just me talking about product research, how I look at it. Uh, so the more videos of these you've watched, the more you're just going to get inside my brain and really learn how I do this thing. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, we'll see you on the next one.